blockchain. Arguably one of the most important, if not the most important technology of the 21st century. With its immutable data and ultra-secure nature, many have hailed it as the database of the future. But what if I told you that this technology has a major flaw? What if it's not as secure as you think? What if we can't prove the past? Can we still trust it? Let me explain. First of all, we need to speak about what a blockchain is. A blockchain is essentially a database containing a collection of immutable blocks. Just think of one block as a bank statement. Each one has a list of transactions representing debits and credits over a period of time. In practice, this means that a bundle of transactions or any other type of data, it can be whatever you want, is written into a block, then verified and eventually stored in the blockchain. So if the block part is a collection of transactions, then what exactly is the chain part? Well, this is what makes blockchains so unique. Every block is mathematically linked to the block before it. They are chained together and this mathematical formula uses data inside a block to compute a unique number, which is called a hash. You can kind of think of it as a unique fingerprint of a block and the data inside the block. This hash is then stored in the next block, forming a chain between every block. So if any of the transactions are altered, for example, someone tries to make it so they have 1 million in tokens instead of just one, the block would be instantly marked as invalid because the hash of the block with the altered transactions wouldn't match the hash that was stored in the next block. Effectively, no data can ever be modified or removed from a blockchain once it has been stored. That means by using a blockchain, you have one big advantage, and that is that you can mathematically verify that the data is accurate and hasn't been tampered with, at least in theory. This process is what makes the blockchain immutable and transparent. And for over a decade, this system has proven to work without a single fail, in the case of Bitcoin. But folks, what if I have to tell you that there is a big problem, one that almost no one is talking about. And this problem is also the reason why I do this video. And it's called Big Data. For context, Visa, the probably biggest payment provider in the world, processed 296.8 billion transactions in the last year, which contributes to a considerable amount of data. Visa's transaction data at its scale is creating about 400 terabytes of transaction data per year. In comparison, present day blockchain data is still quite tiny. And nevertheless, the data sizes are actually becoming a problem. The largest blockchain today is as big as 250 terabytes. And I'm pretty sure you all know the blockchain. It's Solana. Just to give you some context, the Polygon blockchain has a size of around 20 terabytes. So how is it possible that big companies are actually managing these data sizes? Because it also implies if you want to download a full node, you need 450 or 20 terabytes of disk space, which is insane. So how can they even afford having such vast amounts of data? They just split the blockchain data in two or more pieces. In practice, they use other mathematical functions like state proofs to allow servers the ability to run nodes without the full blockchain history. These nodes are then called pruned nodes, which allow people to maintain balances and execute transactions without a full blockchain history. That doesn't mean that the first half of the blockchain data is gone forever, but an entity, for example, a company or a foundation of a blockchain foundation has to make an active effort to retrieve the historical data from a trusted source. I mean, we are here in the blockchain ecosystem and decentralization is a very important value in crypto and in blockchain in general. So you cannot just simply download any random node from somewhere. But coming back to state proofs again. The question is kind of without the full data, aka having an archive, how can you be sure that even these state proofs are valid? And the simple and astonishing answer is, we can't. An incomplete blockchain is like a book without the last chapter. It can never be fully trusted. So okay, then just download the full archive and you can verify everything. Easy. This is where the flaw starts to become more apparent. Some chains are so big, like Solana for example, some of the historical data is already hosted in centralized providers, like Google or Amazon. Although I have to say that Solana actually partnered up with Filecoin to store their 250 terabyte huge archive snapshot in a decentralized way. 
so in some cases it could actually be impossible to get the full archive data over the network directly. Furthermore, as the blockchain becomes more successful, more data is being generated and the blockchain continues to grow and grow and grow and grow, and so also the data size grows. And we all know that blockchains can't be stopped, which means that the data will only get bigger and bigger in the future. Even smaller blockchains like Arbitrum with its 22 terabyte data take over seven months to sync. Syncing means to get a full copy from block zero to the current point. And what we are seeing in the space is that more network operators are opting to run pruned or partial nodes instead of full archives. So there's a chance that the complete historical archive becomes impossible to find, which means that no one really has a full node anymore. I mean, we can just ignore it and be like, whatever happens, happens, but let's think about what is at stake. First of all, we don't have to talk about that this is definitely not good for decentralization. But there's also another perspective on this. Let's just imagine you built a random startup around the Solana ecosystem and your business is going well. You are happy with the revenue and how the company developed in the last couple of years, but you are facing an upcoming regulatory issue because your government decided that in order to continue with your business, you must comply with new policies that require you to provide the whole blockchain transaction data. And I tell you what, this will very likely happen in the future because data integrity and transparency is the key selling point of blockchains. Now, as you can imagine, your company has a huge problem and you have to fix it. So what can we really do against that? Let's say you wanted to get a complete archive of a blockchain like Arbitrum, but you didn't want to spend seven months trying to sync it over the network. You could potentially try to find a so-called snapshot which is the full copy of a blockchain up until a certain point. Some blockchain protocols have some kind of snapshot built in, but they are more rare for the full archive of the blockchain. And if you need a snapshot not directly supported by the protocol, then these are sometimes offered by third-party centralized companies. So let's think about one thing. After downloading 400 terabytes of data, how do you even verify it? And how can you trust that source if it's not the foundation itself? It's quite difficult, but that's why blockchain foundations are spending millions of dollars every year to maintain downloadable snapshots of their blockchain. Once you have a snapshot, you can access historical data much faster and you can validate the blockchain data for the first time at all. So how can we solve this problem? The first option is to develop new standards for saving blockchain data. This would allow us to retain the full blockchain transaction data, but this is super hard to do and not really inside yet. The second solution to the problem is desperately needed. It's a decentralized snapshot service that provides companies with trusted and decentralized verified snapshots that can be downloaded and used to verify transaction data. So basically what I mean by that is that there is a snapshot service that is working completely in a decentralized way and that is also verifying the data of these snapshots in a decentralized way. So you don't have to trust a random third-party company that they are providing you with the right version of the blockchain or you don't have to trust the foundations of the blockchain. In general, you don't have to trust anyone that is how it should be with the blockchain, right? This could also help save foundations a lot of expenses maintaining snapshots themselves. So in conclusion, I think it's going to be very hard to refrain from this prune nodes at all. I think we need them because the blockchains will just continue to grow and grow in data sizes. But we just have to make sure that we provide a very valuable and decentralized snapshot service for everyone. If we don't do that, we are just like going with the principles of Web2. We can just skip the whole blockchain thing and... <laughs> I don't know, just trust any random company again. You know, like it's, it, does, it just doesn't make sense in a decentralized system to trust a centralized company. Uh, this has been historically leads to a lot of problems in the Web3 space. So let me know what you guys think about this solution. My name is Tom from W2F Web3. See you next time.